Good afternoon. So glad you could join us as we continue our Facebook Live interview series called Expert Connections, this time with a special Saturday twist. I'm Julie Holton. I'm the founder and principal strategist of M Connections Marketing Agency. We are a digital agency uh, headquartered here in Lansing, Michigan. We work with businesses and nonprofits of all sizes. So we knew as soon as the COVID-19 pandemic hit that we needed to help our clients and community in the best way that we know how, which is to help connect connect you to much needed resources. Let's face it though, depending on your situation, there may be more low moments right now than high moments. We're right there with you. And so today we're going to bring you three very special guests. I'm very excited to welcome to Expert Connections these three lovely folks. By day, they are hardworking professionals. They are experts in their fields of public policy work, advertising creative, business development work. But by night, they know how to block out fear, creating fun ways to connect to their communities virtually. So join me in welcoming Audrea Fink, Terry Streetman, and Seth Barnhill to Expert Connections. Hey, guys. <laughs> thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, thanks for, having for having us. Thanks. Okay, so yeah. let's do a quick round of introductions. I think the easiest thing is to have you tell us what you do for work. So, Audrea, let's start with you. Great. So, my name is Audrea Fink. I am a business development manager at a major law firm in the Pacific Northwest. So, I have about 180 attorneys at my firm, and we work, my team and I work to help attorneys be more strategic in bringing in clients and be more strategic in serving their clients and providing better customer service. And I know, Audrea, you have been working essentially around the clock. Um, your attorneys are very busy right now, we as are. you can imagine. Terry, let's go to you next. Hi, Terry. Hi. So I'm, my name is Terry Streetman. I am the Director of Public Policy and Advocacy for the Alzheimer's Association Nebraska chapter. I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I'm working from home for the last month, so uh, it's been um, really interesting. But uh, yeah, I'm... I, I care about this cause both professionally and personally. It's something that I have a, a longstanding connection to. My grandfather passed from the disease. You can actually see him right there. Um, and so it's something that I, it, you know, I truly am working my dream job and I'm very thankful. And I am sure your grandpa is so proud of you, Terry. And I am loving this makeshift. Well, not even makeshift. You built this beautiful bar behind you, but I'm loving that it's your makeshift office for today. Yeah. <laughs> and then Seth. Hey, Seth. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay, so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, um, I'm a creative director at uh, the Mars Agency, which is an advertising agency uh, focusing on shopper marketing uh, out in Southfield, Michigan. So I live in Brighton, usually about a 45 minute commute. So uh, for about the last month, I've, I've been getting an hour and a half back into my day, which which I'm not really complaining about. It's allowed me to be a lot more productive, actually. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it, it's been it's been a lot of uh, a lot of interesting learnings, figuring out how to uh, work from home and remain as productive, but but luckily uh, technology has come to the rescue uh, more than once. Absolutely, and I bet your dogs are and your wife are loving having you at home more. I'm yeah. sure you're loving less time on the road, but of course, you know, if we if we would never choose for this, right, the situation that we're all in, I'm sure we're, we're all finding the silver lining as we navigate our virtual lives. And that is the whole point of today's Facebook Live is to really talk about that. Because, um, so I've known Seth and Terry for a long time. Fortunately for me, we met back in, um, Gosh, I don't even know. I think it's been eight, seven or eight years at this point. 2013, maybe? Yep, 2013. Yeah. So we met, um, as you might guess, through the Alzheimer's Association, given given Terry's awesome um, advocacy work going on right now with that beautiful shirt you have on. Um, and as always, <laughs> and Terry and Seth actually created, they founded an amazing group in Lansing called the Young Professional Alzheimer's Advocates of Lansing, YPAL for short. And I actually have some fun photos that I'm going to share. It's going to take me a second to kind of pull these up here, but I, you know, they've just given their titles. We've just heard who they are by day and the amazing work that they do in their careers. So I want to give you a little peek behind the curtain of who they are kind of in their off time. So here's here's one of our, our pictures of the guys. Um, there's Terry there headed off to, actually to Capitol Hill in that top photo to advocate for, for Alzheimer's um, funding for the important research. Um, there's a photo you can see Seth on the bottom there in a, in a community project. Um, this next photo is one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> I 
Uh, we've got, uh, well, it kind of says it all, but but Terry is is willing to do pretty much anything for the cause, which is um, so important to all of us. Here's another photo of the two guys singing karaoke. Um, this was a really awesome fundraiser where, of course, we all dressed up and donned our purple and, and sang karaoke and, and raised um, quite a bit of money for the cause there. And then, you know, I've got another photo to show of Seth in a cheerleader outfit. If you can spy him there at the top of the screen. Um, this was for a female flag football game where the women play flag football and uh, and the men uh, are the cheerleaders. And so that was a lot of fun. So you can see these guys really have, they really know how to, um, how to work for a cause and take a difficult situation and make the most out of it. So, um, I, I really want to talk first, Seth, with you because you have taken this, um, this, and I decided to put on a little gear. Yeah. I'm so jealous that I don't have anything purple. I'm, I'm trying not to be distracted by it and, and wishing I still had that purple wig that I was wearing in that photo. I know. You know what? I have it here for you. So when the social distancing thing is over, Seth, this is this is yours. I will give it back to you. It doesn't look as good on me. Um, I almost forgot to introduce the fact that I had put this gear on as I was flipping through those photos. Um, I just thought, you know, we need to have a little fun, right? And so, Seth, you came up with this really amazing um, idea, and I'd love to have you tell us about it because this has been a lot of fun. And I know we're looking for fun right now. Yeah, no, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. And uh, it actually started, uh, so what it is, is um, the, there it is right there, the, the greatest TV show theme song tournament. Uh, and it started just over a week ago, actually. It was uh, my, my wife, Steph, um, had the cheer song stuck in her head for some reason. And uh, she made the, the comment that it was actually, the lyrics were kind of actually perfect for, for being, you know, quarantined. Um, and then we started talking, like just asking each other, like, okay, what are your top three, you know, favorite theme songs of all time? And we both kind of had the same initial response, different answers, but the same response, which was, oh, that's easy. And we rattled off three, but then we started thinking, well, but then there's this and there's this. And before you knew it, we had, we each had like a top 20. And, uh, I just realized that, you know, a lot of people kind of have passionate opinions over, over, you know, what the best theme songs are. And. We clearly had a lot, so I thought there was there would probably be enough there that we could make a fun bracket tournament, as I've seen some other uh, sites and people doing it, you know, without there being NCAA basketball, I'm trying to pull in some other tournaments and brackets to, to sort of fill that time, fill that void. Um, and so we started to sort of jotting down all the theme songs that we could think of, and before you know it, we had probably like around 130. Um, so we, we actually have enough. Wow, for 130. Second. Yeah. That's okay. a lot. It's it's a ton more than I, I thought would be possible, but um, you know we 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 could easily do a second bracket starting tomorrow of sixty four uh, theme songs that aren't even represented here. It, it, and it's here's really that cool. bracket that you came up with. Like this is this incredible, is and you designed this. Like you put a little bit of work into this, Seth. I, I lost an entire Sunday to this. <laughs> Or Just did you gain an entire fun day from it? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, and it was literally until the last second, like uh, Steph and I deciding, like you know, which songs were were the final, you know, sixty four. Uh, you know, d during March Madness, there's always um, what the, the the sports commentators refer to as like you know the the last four in and the first four out, which are the ones the the, the last four teams that make the tournament are the first four, or, or the last four teams that, that just missed the cut. And and we had those two. I mean, for me, heartbreakingly, you know, Fraggle Rock is personally one of my all time favorite theme songs. And it was, it was probably number 65 on the list. So it just oh, missed the cut. But I know I hated getting rid of it, but I, but I, I, I know I had to take some emotion out of it, you know, but, <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> This is brilliant. We can't always go with our emotions. We've got to go with the logic of this list and only someone can go on the list. That's so right. how does someone who's maybe in like a different state for per se join said bracket? Like how do we do, how do I replicate Audrey that? wants in. I know, I'm like, I, this is the best thing I've ever seen in quarantine. <laughs> better than the quarantini. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny because I, I looked at a few sites that actually like host brackets and you like bracket tournaments on them. And, and they were all kind of, I felt like lacking. at least the free ones were kind of lacking for what I wanted. So I'm just hosting it on my Facebook, but then also on Twitter. So uh, Twitter is open to anybody that can find it, you know, hashtag greatest TV theme song. Um, so the polls are up now for the, for the sweet 16. 
uh, up until tomorrow with the Elite Eight being announced on on Monday. So yeah, we've just this past week we've whittled, whittled it down from sixty four down to down to our remaining sixteen. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Okay, so the the friend requests are already piling up, Seth. <laughs> Audrey is already, she's over there. She's requesting. I mean, she's in. Yeah. Um, what are you gonna do to? So we promise. We promised. I promise. No pressure at all. But what are you gonna do to you know to kind of like each milestone, you know, for the elite eight and, you know, yeah. and for the big announcement when you have the winner, yeah. do you're going to go big. I mean, because we've seen those pictures now of you going big. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I see how you set me up now. I see what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm wearing purple and the, whatever. I don't even know what this is, but I am, I am rocking it in a Facebook live. Yeah. So it I'm actually looks kind of kind of snuggly. It is right. Yeah. I know, and yeah. I really—I didn't even realize Fraggle Rock wasn't on the list, but now I'm very upset. Yeah, so, I know, right? I mean, Blame me. Although uh, your, your wife has commented, let's just throw this up on the screen. Stephanie says next year. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know what, Stephanie? I mean, April Madness. Maybe there's a May Madness. I, I don't know. But anyway, back to back yeah. to the the grand finale. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm toying with. Uh, the idea of doing a, of doing a Facebook Live to announce the uh, the champion. Yeah. Um, so we'll yeah we'll we'll see what happens there. Uh, this is actually my first Facebook Live ever, so we'll, we'll see if I can figure out how how to do it as, as awesomely as you do, Julie. But uh, you're rocking it, Sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you're a pro. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. No, it it should be a lot of fun. I uh, originally I was just gonna post this and hope a few people voted on it and just you know and just have some fun, some fun with it myself. That's really all I was planning on. Uh, but it's it's gotten a pretty awesome response, you know, getting a lot of votes on on Twitter and a lot of great comments on on Facebook from people about it. So uh, it's kind of encouraged me to, to to yeah maybe do something a little bit bigger with it with the finale and and then also to keep keep doing more more brackets in the future. Maybe maybe a maybe a holiday movie bracket. Who knows? Ooh, I mean, I want to be included in, in every bracket. Yeah. <laughs> I am not <laughs> into oh, yeah. basketball, but I will do movies and theme songs one hundred percent. Awesome. So like I'm curious. It what the response that you've received did, did it surprise you i mean what what kind of response have you been getting from people yeah so i, I expected some people would would like it and enjoy it. you know um one of my coworkers, who who is also a a, a musician uh even said like as soon as i announced it he was even like this, this is important content i'm gonna be here for this you know so i expected some people would like it but but some of the reactions i've gotten have been you know People saying that uh, it, it's it's been a very welcome distraction, uh, which was nice to hear. Um, you know, uh, my my, my sister in law loved it so much. She actually asked if she could like steal the concept, which I'm like, well, of course, there's nothing to steal. It's it's just out there for fun. So she's she's going to do something with a bracket as well. You know, for for her friends and whatnot, and and that's great. Um, and then I even has some friends of mine uh, uh, back in Colorado. They they have a toddler, and so they've used the bracket as. Uh, an excuse, an opportunity to sort of introduce their son to all of the theme songs that they've loved. And he's actually, you know, voting w along with them now. So we, we get, we get their picks and we get Trey's picks, you know, for, for, for each round and they play them that all. Amazing. Them. Homeschooling yeah. at its best right there. Exactly. Can you vote for Fraggle Rock? <laughs> well, I don't know if you've Fraggle Rock yet. Uh, hopefully soon. But, um, but, you know, he's been uh, not only listening to him and picking which ones he likes, but they've been using it to teach him the concept of or. Like he understands and, a lot of times I want this and this, but now they're teaching him or, do you like this or this? And he's had to you know, learn what that means. Um, although it's still a process, because I know he voted for the Golden Girls twice in the last round, so. Um, <laughs> what a song. Yeah, well, exactly. Some of us are still learning that concept. We just want it all, <laughs> so. <laughs> This is really awesome, Seth. Okay, we've got a couple of comments. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up some of these. Uh, Stephanie says Trey has been picking songs. Yep, that's awesome. She's tagging his parents so they can see yep. that he's now famous on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and you guys, a special comment here from our friend Julie Dusing, who used to work at the Alzheimer's Association here in Michigan. She says Purple Rocks. We love you, Julie. Hope you and your family are doing well. Okay, so let's let's switch gears a little bit. 
Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull Terry's, um, gosh, Terry, this has just been, I don't, where do we even start with this? You are so creative as well. It's no wonder that you and Seth came up with the idea for YPAL and things like this. I fully blame both of you for, for looks like this. Um, so it's, it's no, it's no surprise, but why don't you tell us about, um, first tell us about Connected by Spirits, this, um, pr maybe pre quarantine era, what this group is and, and what it does. Sure. Um, I also want to give a shout out to to Stephanie, who was who was there from the beginning with YPAL. Um, yes. It just the amount of things that have happened in my life since we started that group that wouldn't have happened otherwise is incredible. But um, speaking of starting groups, um, Connected by Spirits actually traces its origins back to Lansing. So uh, I met somebody. I met a, made a friend back in Lansing through a shared connection with the um, distiller at American Fifth Spirits. And we were at a party. Uh, the only person we each knew that was there was the distiller, and he had to leave. So we met and kind of bonded over the course of that evening over the idea of a more welcoming, um, fun, educational environment within the world of spirits and cocktails, because there's a lot of gatekeeping. There's a lot of pretension uh, that you can run into. And really, that applies to any interest, I think. You know, people want to learn, but they don't want to maybe be made to feel bad about what they don't know. And so we started this group. Um, we would do monthly visits to cocktail bars and just learn about different spirits and different cocktails. Um, and then that happened only a few months before we ended up moving out here to Omaha. And so um, I immediately was thinking, you know, I would love to start sort of a chapter here in Nebraska. Um, and that was boosted by the fact that we moved to the downtown area and most of the first friends that we had when we moved here were bartenders, um, which I don't know what that says about us, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm not judging. Yeah. I mean, um, you, have, you have good taste. taste. What's that? It says that you have good taste. Yeah. And, and you, you, and you were and good you are, bars. And you um, are coming to us live from your own bar that you built with your own woodworking skills. So yeah. now you're a man of many, <laughs> many talents. <laughs> Well, thank you. So yeah, it, so so eventually, you know, we decided I decided to start up the group here in, in Omaha. Um, and that we just started up in December. So we had, had uh, our last in person gathering was March 11th, um, which was one day before I got the order to stay to work from home from then on, um, and only a few days before most other people did. And so you know, we had built some momentum. There were people who were interested in this group, and we I was thinking, you know, how do we continue to build this thing and give people an escape and, you know, engagement with that interest. And then at the same time, I was watching all of those friends who worked in the service industry just hit so hard by this because all of the restaurants and bars were closed. Um, and if they were open, it was one or two people doing, you know, to go cocktails out the door. Um, and so what we just, what I eventually came up with was this virtual happy hour concept that we've been doing um connecting through these virtual networking platforms um this picture here is actually last night we had our weekly virtual happy hour and also i decided to combine it as a virtual birthday party because uh, my birthday is this weekend we had a guest bar a couple guest bartenders um we had a musical guest and um what we've been able to do as a result of this is share their venmo information so people can send them tips virtually um, and I've heard from several of the folks that we've had as guests that said, you know, the tips that I got this week helped me get groceries or, um, you know, helped me to, to get some transportation so I could go to the store or I could go to an interview. Um, and that to me is, is so incredible to be able to support folks this way because, you know, when I say they were our first friends, that also means they were who welcomed us here to Nebraska. So um, we've, we've gotten a lot in terms of friendship and, comfort from them. And so I want to repay the favor. That's so cool. Isn't this so cool? And, yeah. and and Seth and I were both part of this party last night. Audrey, I'm, I'm so sorry. I think you oh, were, was my I mean, <laughs> you were busy working, <laughs> but Seth, this is so cool. I mean, so I've been, I've been trying to, um, I've been, a, I've been a little slow on, on the uptake here, trying to flip through some of these pictures. Um, but I mean, this was just such a fun, a fun way to get together last night with people. And, and like you said, I thought it was so cool. I'm going to pull up. We've got 
um, a video in here somewhere. I'm going to pull this up and just kind of, and then I'll stop playing around with these pictures. <laughs> but um, it was, oh, I, first I have to show. So here's you and your wife, you know, you know, tending your own bar last night. So, so cool. Although I was really jealous. Emily was eating this pizza that looked absolutely amazing. And I just wanted her to be able to hand me a slice. And so other than that, the party was amazing. Um, so Terry, I just, I think this is so cool because, um, you know, one of the things you did as you were talking about, and I, I really want to emphasize this, I thought it was so creative that, um, you have the bartenders and the musician share their Venmo info so that we could actually pay them for their entertainment. And I'll tell you what, it was still a cheaper night for me than if I had gone out to the bar. So, right. but, yeah. I mean, but what a great way to support them right now. Absolutely. And that, that was kind of the thought is, you know, because for us, we don't go out a lot these days, but, you know, we, we go out for more a little more, a little more glitzy <laughs> um, We would go out that. here and there um, <laughs> or for meals. And so, you know, the money that we're not spending on that as folks who have some, uh, can, you know, steady income, we're just, okay, we're not going to spend 30 bucks on drinks or dinner or whatever tonight. Let's send that to our friends who are struggling. Um, and I've actually seen a cool concept from another state where they have a basically listed out on a page. It's like uh, you can click a dollar for like tip for one drink or, you know, you, it, every time you make a cocktail at home, tip $15 to this pool of money that goes to these service industry folks. And it's um, it's been really cool to see that. That's really awesome. How would you recommend someone um, like in another space who maybe doesn't have the same connections as you start that? Like what, what would it take? for someone to gather a few people? So um, one of the biggest connections um, in a lot of areas would be the US Bartenders Guild chapter, if you have one in your area. Um, mm -hmm. Nationally, the Bartenders Guild has a bartender emergency assistance program. And so um, they are providing assistance for housing and food and things like that. Um, but in the local areas, they might be able to connect you with bartenders who would be willing and able to do something like this. Um, last night we had uh, Carrie and Nick from the bar Barnado here in Omaha. Um, they were actually in the bar because they were setting up for to go cocktail service. Uh, they were going to start opening up. But we've had guest bartenders just from home, in, you know, from a cart with three bottles on it, do a cocktail demonstration. Um, so I'd say, you know, reach out to the bartender skill, um, you know, look on Facebook for different groups for service industry people. There are a lot of groups that have started uh, for those folks to share ideas and share resources um during this this crisis so you know you never know unless you ask um it certainly hasn't been you know last night was incredible i think we had 38 people total on there across six states and two continents um but you know the first view it was three or four people and one of my friends was a bartender but it was still awesome so you know if somebody wants to do this don't get discouraged if it's not you know a huge thing right away <laughs> the funniest thing has been people i've talked to have said they wanted to, to attend and then I talk to them the next day and they're like, oh, I completely forgot what day it was because time is meaningless right now. So right. there are some interesting um, hurdles to get over. But uh, yeah, I would encourage anybody. And if people want to reach out to us, we have a Facebook page connected by Spirits Nebraska. Um, same thing on Instagram. If you have questions, I'm happy to help. I just love this idea, Terry, of connecting, whether it be with bartenders or people in the service industry, maybe it's connecting with nonprofits or groups that are struggling or groups that are, that are, you know, really rallying to help people who need it the most right now. I mean, just what a cool way to continue to support them. And you've talked about kind of some other, you know, creative and interesting ideas that you're thinking about. Um, do you want to share one with us? Sure. So one of the other things that um, I thought of early on uh was virtual karaoke which is so fitting with the photos that you showed earlier yes. um, i'm ready i'm in i mean i, I don't really want to sing but i'm dressed i'm dressed for attendance <laughs> yeah so, so there's a karaoke bar here in town that's one of the ones with like private rooms and you can select your songs off the computer and their parent company actually is in the pacific northwest um and so i reached out to our, the guy who runs the one here and he said oh that's a great idea let me check and they're in the process of trying to get set up for that right now and so, you know, one, it could just be a fun thing to do with friends to connect over, you know, over long distances, but it also could be a great way, um, the way that we did our fundraiser uh, back in the day with YPAL, 
if I donated twenty dollars, I can say Seth has to sing the greatest American hero theme song. Mm -hmm. And then Seth, okay, he would never do this because he would love to sing that song. He could donate twenty dollars to cancel that out. Um, but there's a lot of fun ways that you can kind of make that work to support a nonprofit because as an as a nonprofit employee right now, we are struggling too. Mm -hmm. um, the need has not decreased. If anything, it's increased. And you know, everybody's hurting for money. Everybody's you know has a ton of expenses right now. So, um, you know, we could really use the support so we can keep supporting the people in the community that we care for. Yeah, what a cool, what a cool idea. And, you know, so we wanted, we wanted to take this time to talk about some fun things and, and really kind of make light of this difficult situation. But the reality is, and, and Audrea, you and I talk about this a lot on our Think Tank of Three podcast, the reality is the mental health aspect mm -hmm. of what's happening is really heavy. We, in fact, I was talking with a client of mine on Monday and she is um, a psychotherapist out of Chicago. And we were just having this conversation about um, kind of what people are going through right now and, and what she's seeing. And, and she said, you know, we don't fully know the impact. We haven't experienced something like this before. And so a lot of this, um, you know, we're going to be seeing the effects of it as we come out of it. So, you know, I think from a mental health standpoint, I know I sure as heck looked forward to that party last night with with Terry and, and Seth and the and the friends because, um, gosh, what a, first of all, what a great way to wrap up your week, right? Like normally on a Friday evening, you might have something planned or you might have something planned over the weekend and the days start to get really long. And if they're only filled with work or isolation, it gets really hard hard and really heavy. Um, you know, guys, what are, what are you seeing? Terry, what are you seeing with that? I mean, for me personally, that's, that's a big part of it is just like, like I said before, time kind of feels meaningless. One of the clips that was kind of in the background when we were talking was uh, a news station in Cleveland did a segment called what day is it where they literally just during the broadcast will say it's Wednesday, um, <laughs> which is not today. If anyone's mixed up today's um, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> but, but having something to look As pointed to out by the person who wanted me to send her a calendar invite to make sure she didn't forget about this. <laughs> I, I, feel you, I already had it on my own calendar. So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that's a big thing for me because I everything's kind of blending together, and and I've been really honest with folks around me about my mental health awareness. It's been a really big struggle for me. My sleep has been terrible. It's hard to stay focused on anything. Um, and I saw somebody sum it up as, you are not working from home, you are at home during a crisis trying to work. And that to me like really hit, hit home because I was sitting here going, I'm doing a terrible job. No, I'm, all things considered, I'm probably doing pretty good, so. Yeah. I've been that's working really in, uh, incredible hours lately, but it, and that's my choice, right? Like that's not something my, my work is, uh, forced me to do. It's my choice. And part of the reason is I don't feel like I'm as productive. And I also feel like my work is going to help the people at my job be better, do better, bring in more money, right? Which will help all of the people in general. So there's this weird dichotomy between I know I'm overworking myself and I'm getting tired, but I also feel very uh, responsible you know, for, for showing up in a way that is beneficial for the rest of my team. And there's there's sort of a weird like mind like struggle there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Seth, Seth, your wife, who, who's in our comments, she's been an amazing advocate in my ear this whole time because I think, and I think you can all relate to this, we get into that mode where um, I know each of us has, have been very fortunate and I'm very grateful that we've been busy. We have work to do. We have employment right now. We, you know, and we also have clients who, um, for many of us, still have pressing needs. And so we feel that urgency to be there in the moment and to work these long hours and, and be there whenever they might text or call. Because also, let's face it, as we work from home, people are realizing the blurred boundaries between work and home time. Yeah. And so that that you know nine o'clock text message is um, now becoming the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock or weekend text message. Um, and so on one hand, we're very, I'm very grateful for this. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we also have to consider what we're going through personally. Mm -hmm. And and Seth, I know that's something that Stephanie is so good about, about helping us through, but you've been working really long hours too. Is that, you know, a sense that you get that maybe creating this bracket 
you know, tournament that you have going on? Does that help offset maybe the long professional hours that you're working? You know, it, it, it does a bit. It's funny too, because it, while it's never felt like work, I've, I've, you know, used some of the, the tricks of the trade to make doing the bracket a little bit easier too. Like all of the Facebook and Twitter posts I publish, I've, I've written ahead of time and then I'm just sort of, you know, publishing them at the, at the right time. So it's, it's taking up less time during the days. Um, but you know, what, what I'll say overall is that what I've noticed with, with people uh, at, at work is, um, like you said, it's a lot, there's a lot more blurring of that, of that work life boundary. I think people are struggling with that. Um, but also there's a thing where I think a lot of people are very used to that face to face interaction and being able to work with each other that way. And when they don't have that, um, they're, they're not communicating as well. And it's not because they're doing anything worse. It's just that they're operating as normal. And so it's, I know something that, that, um, we've stressed uh in 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 my uh, in, in my company is that like you know it's okay to have like a different schedule now just make sure you're communicating you know if if, if you take a break in the middle of the day that's fine you want to take the dogs for a walk or you know uh you're on kid duty in the morning because your your partner has calls and then you know you're more working in the afternoon and after the kids go to bed well that's fine but just make sure that other people know that so that we can sort of account for that um so for me, it hasn't been really any more uh, work necessarily. The, the hours uh, still fluctuate. Some days there's not as much, and it's a regular eight-hour day. And then one day earlier this week, I worked probably a 11, 12-hour day. Um, and, that's, and that's pretty normal. It's just more um, being cognizant of how you, how you segment that time and making sure that it's not all work time, that you are disconnecting, you are still finding time to – to be home, you know, usually for me, I would have that 45 minute commute to sort of make that transition from, from, from work life to home life. And I don't have that now. So I have to be, uh, I have to be more conscientious of what I'm doing. So when I disconnect from work, I have to, you know, usually I physically close the computer and I say like, I thought, okay, I'm done now. And that, you know, now I'm home. Uh, and, and just doing things like that has, has really helped me. That's great advice. Yeah. We, we haven't actually been great about doing it, but something that, that my wife Emily suggested, um, she is very much the brains of the operation over here. Um, but her idea was in the morning that we should wake up and we should both take a walk around the block and walk to work. And then at the end of the day, shut our computers and walk around the block to walk home from work. A great um, you know, right. salt, a little bit of two birds with one stone because uh, I have not done much exercise or movement in general, um, but it also helps that separation. Yeah. Well, think about that time on the, on a commute, whether you're driving home, even if it's a 10 minute drive, even if you have a really short commute, there's that time that you process you mentally change from one world to the next. I love, I love that idea, Emily. Thanks for, thanks for that idea. Yeah. I think the disruption of routine has been really hard for people too. I know for me, I have a really short commute. It's like a 25 minute trip to work 15 of that is on a bus 10 minutes is me running because I missed the last bus and then just waiting and then <laughs> heavily until the one comes um but that's the time that I would spend my morning meditating right so I get on the bus I put in a, like a calm app meditation and by the time I get to work I feel very like grounded and ready to go and um now I wake up five minutes before whatever my first call is and I like grab clothes that I can be seen online in because all of, <laughs> all of my calls now are video meetings um, which in one hand is great because you get some of that connection. And on the other hand, like you have to brush your hair. Um, so I, I think some of that routine has also been something where I don't feel like I'm as centered walking into work as I used to. And so building something like walking to work or waking up 15 minutes earlier so you can do a 10 minute meditation before you start is, I think, a, a really good way to build some of that separation and maybe doing a meditation when you end. Absolutely. I was talking to someone this morning and she was saying uh, I was I was sharing some advice from from another one of our expert connections interviews because she was saying, you know, I feel great, but my house is really starting to look the same. Like I'm in the same room all the time and everything. She's like, I don't know if I need to buy some new pictures or what if I need to redecorate what I need to do. And I said, you know, OK, so someone on one of our podcasts or on one of our episodes I can't even remember who it was at this point. It's a blur. But someone mentioned, I think it might have been, might have been, um, well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, someone mentioned, um, like, move to a different room. 
Like mm-hmm. maybe you work in the morning in your dining room and maybe in the afternoon, like, and I realized like I have, I have a couple spare bedrooms that I never even go in. Like suddenly I can have a different office for each of my clients if I want to, <laughs> you know? So like if you're starting to feel like the mundane and for me, it's, um, I need to stop taking my laptop with me to the couch in the evening. So like I need to go and have a set space where I work and then I, I need to take Emily's advice and close the laptop and walk her, walk the dogs around the block and then come in and not reopen the laptop. I got a Chromebook uh, for that exact reason, because there's things you want to do on the Internet, right? But you don't want to use your work computer because as soon as I open it up, I'm like, well, I'm just going to check email real quick and then you're working. So I got a Chromebook and I can't I can't access my I mean, I can if I want to, but it's not easy to access my work from there. And so then like all I do on that is like Facebook blogging, talking crap to my friends and family and then like online games. I love that. Now, Audrey, you've actually had some some fun ideas that you've been using too. So you wrote a whole blog for Think Tank of Three. I don't want to forget about that. You wrote a blog early on. I mean, it's probably almost a month ago at this point, um, talking about at least three weeks ago, talking about how to connect with people virtually. So I, I don't want to forget that before we wrap up. But you know, um, tell us about some of the digital platforms out there because maybe we have some people watching who are like, "Wow, and Terry, those ideas are awesome," but I'm still figuring out how to like work from home. Sure, sure. So uh, my very favorite platform right now is called Marco Polo, although I just heard about House Party, Mm -hmm. which may become my new favorite once I figure out how to use it. I haven't figured it out yet. I mean, either practice that because I just downloaded it. I'm like, I I feel like a grandma. Like, I don't After this, it's weird because you can play games on it. It's Yeah, I'm with you. I just need a tutorial. So Marco Polo is like, uh, I like to think of it as video voicemail. So I have a group of my cousins. We never see each other. We're all over different places. But every morning, uh, my cousin Shannon kicks it off with like, hey, guys, today's Tuesday, which is super helpful (laughs) because I don't know what day it is otherwise. And then we just basically talk crap to each other all day long. Like we just tease each other. That's our family. Um, I talk to my nephews and nieces via Marco Polo. That's usually less it's really more than just like showing me shots of their nostrils because they haven't figured out the phone. Yeah. But, but I get those it's, too. it's yeah. great, right? Like you still get that connection and you get it when you have time. So because it's like video voicemail, I check it like when I'm done with work or I check it when I take a break or I do a lot of Marco Poloing when I walk the dog. Like that's probably my prime Marco Polo time. So it's awesome as a way to like keep connected without it actually ha- having to be something that takes you away from something else which for me with my crazy long hours has been really helpful because otherwise I wouldn't talk to anyone because I'm like, it's midnight. Who's up? What um, a great idea. My sister put her kids on Facebook messenger, which I think is kind of the, you know, for young kids, yeah. kind of a safe alternative parents have full access. Yeah. And so I get the most random messages, especially from Ella, the eight year old, <laughs> but she has started sending me videos, especially of her siblings. <laughs> and they're the best, especially because yeah. um, three and a half year old Azalea loves to just sing songs all day long. Like Seth, I should actually put her in this bracket. Like sh- I should have her voting because <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you what, Absolutely. that girl will put us and and in karaoke, she will put us all to shame. She she doesn't talk lately. She sings everything. So she'll be like, I'm wearing a picture, but then she'll be like, I'm oh, sorry. See, that's why I don't do karaoke. <laughs> she has started making up songs about Aunt Julie. Now Ella has started sending me videos of, of Azalea cleaning the house or what playing, whatever she's doing and singing about Aunt Julie. I can tell you oh, what. That's now, awesome. If you need something to lift you up, like your mental health, I will I will put you on Azalea's Thanks. email list and she can yeah. email yeah. you <laughs> about you. Please, thank you. I, I volunteer. <laughs> um, so house party supposedly is like that in the sense that it's like the video messaging, or maybe it's like FaceTime for people who don't have iPhones. Yeah. Again, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, But then also you can play games on it. So you can play games with the people you're on, which is big for me. So my husband and I are super cool kids who like to play board games. Um, And we have a couple of couple friends that we usually get together with like once a month and we have like a big board game night. And obviously we can't do that now. So the other thing we've been doing is looking at online games that you can play together. So Dominion is one of them. Um, Pandemic is another, there's Ticket to Ride, Settlers of Catan. They have like an online platform, you sign up and you can all join in one game. 
And then there's like Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia. You sign up and you can play these games together. And then there's like chat options. So we've been doing um, Google Hangouts and then doing the chat uh, or talking to each other while playing the game. So that's been really fun because we can still drink and talk and tease each other and play games. I love that. It's not just a conversation where you're trying to like, like I don't, we don't have any updates, right? Like our life literally is the exact same day to day to day. So when people are like, what have you been up to lately? Like, <laughs> things last time. So the game gives you some breakup from that. I like that. I was, you know, I was on a, right before Terry's party last night, I was on a virtual happy hour with some girlfriends and we were like 15 minutes in and we were all sick of talking about the current situation. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, and it's hard because like you have to get those feelings out and it's good mm -hmm. to talk about it, but then you, it also becomes overload and you just, but then like, we're like, okay, so what do we talk about? Right. <laughs> like, right. There's nothing new. Yeah. 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 So game, what a great idea. Well, you know, and when you get uh, tired of talking about that stuff too, there, there's other things like, I just heard about the, the game too. I'm very excited about that because uh, we have, there's another couple that we'll do game nights with as well. Mm -hmm. And Pandemic, Settlers of Catan, mm -hmm. we've played those before too. So being able to, to maybe do that again is, is, is pretty awesome. But, um, yeah. but, you know, there's also, I've heard about some people doing uh, virtual viewing parties. Or it's yes. like we'll, we'll get together, you know, virtually, and then just watch the same movie together. Like I'll hit play at the same time. But oh yeah, there's like Netflix party. We'll do that too. So you yeah, can... yeah, exactly. And there's even um, uh, independent theaters like the Historic Howell Theater, uh, not not too far from us here, which is an independent theater. Um, they've started, you know, renting movies through their site. So it's mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. independent movies that are in theaters now that 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 you know aren't like studio movies that have they've moved them to platforms. These are movies where if you can't see them in the theater, you just you're just not going to get to see them. You're not going to be able to, to support them. So right. they actually worked it out with those independent independent studios that that you can rent it through the you know historic Howell Theaters uh, website and then watch it on there, which is which is pretty awesome as well. That's so, great. Yeah. yeah. We, have a, cool we, have, we have film streams that's our independent theater, and they've been doing online. Um, and then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, yesterday. Uh, the movie Trolls World Tour did their world premiere as a rental from Amazon so you could watch it at home with like a tweet along with the cast, uh, which I thought was just kind of a cool thing. Like That's really smart, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. And I, and I saw you tweeting about it too. Yeah. Well, yeah. So speaking of things that help, you know, break the tedium and pass the time, uh, one of our favorite podcasts I've been listening to for just shy of 10 years and they, the three brothers who are on it, got to be part of the Trolls movie. So that's what, you know, got me to want to watch it. Um, also, it's a great movie. We watched it again this morning because Emily couldn't watch it with me yesterday. Uh, and I watched it for a second time in less than 24 hours, and it's still awesome. So oh, that's yeah. awesome. Throwing a plug out there. What I, I love, too, oh, is, well, just real quickly, what, what I love, too, is how much of an emphasis there is on local. You know, yeah. Terry, you've been supporting all of these local bars and these organizations. Seth, you just mentioned the Historic Howell Theater, which is a, a small town theater. Um, and, and I really hope that something when we come out the other side of this, I hope that there is this heart for local, you know, keeps beating strongly because it's it's going to be so important as we start to breathe life back into these businesses. Yeah. There have been a handful of artists who've also been putting sort of free shows up. A lot of local artists who, again, they put, it's a free show, but then you can donate or add add to their Venmo. And a lot of big names have been doing a lot of concerts um, or stand up comedy. So I think that's been pretty cool to see, sort of this shift to. I don't want to say quality because I definitely don't think that's where we're at. But at the same time, sort of like leveling the playing field. Like you don't have to have three hundred dollars for a concert ticket to see someone right. put on a show, and that's been kind of neat. Yeah, a absolutely. Well, and and um, Julie, what you're just saying there too about, about community, and you know, the, there's a lot of local pride right now, and you know, we hope mm -hmm. that, that continues. But e even aside from um, the the supporting people financially aspect of it, there's you know, um, locally here in in Brighton, uh, we have a Brighton Environmental Council that was planning on doing this big like uh, art gallery opening for a uh, 50th Earth Day celebration. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they can't do now, but they just announced that they're doing it virtually. So. Um, so there's going to be a big, you know, art gallery opening on uh, and like Friday. And they're going to be doing like art classes with some of the some of the local artists and whatnot. So you know, find, people finding ways to to still do the things that they want to do in in their normal day to day, but to somehow be able to do them online or do them virtually has been you know like a real, uh, you know, I think lifeline for a lot of people. 
Yeah. Well, and I think it also expands the reach. So we have an organization here called Washington Maritime Blue. Our uh, Seattle is a maritime, uh, maritime town, right? Like that is our 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 main economic drive. Well, maybe not our main, but it's a big economic driver for us. And we have this organization. It's a nonprofit that works with uh, startups to help innovate the maritime community because the maritime is also set in like 300 year old laws. So like it's a very old slash needing to get new organization. And so I watched this this two hour long presentation where they had all of their um, innovators for the year in this program present. And the the presentation, it was to the maritime group, but because it was live, they just made it free for everyone. So anyone in the state of Washington, anyone in the maritime community internationally could have watched this and seen some of the amazing things that are coming out of Seattle. And so I think not only do you get this cool local pride, but you also get the capacity to take that maybe beyond the borders of what you would have had otherwise. Yeah. I, that is really cool. One of the things that I've seen too, and you talk about that local pride, um, like hyper local pride, uh, the musical guest who we had last night on our happy hour this morning with a couple other folks, they maintained good social distancing, but they do, they do a concert every week from the porch of his house or their street in their neighborhood. Love and people come out of their houses on their own porches and enjoy this show. And um, they also are rallying support for people who need you know, financial assistance. Um, and that's really cool to me. That Same as you guys, I, that's one of the things that I hope doesn't go back to the way it was mm -hmm. once this is all done. The amount of pride that people have and, and the amount of effort that they're putting into caring for one another um, is really inspiring, and I, I just really hope that we can keep that in mind as we keep moving forward. I love that. Okay, so we have a couple comments. I'm going to interrupt and just share some of these comments. Um, Melissa King says, there are so many awesome virtual trips for mm -hmm. both adults and children. Mm -hmm. Melissa, what a great idea. Um, I love that. And I've also seen museums doing virtual tours. And there's one museum, gosh, I'm going to have to look it up and then put it in the in the comments. But one museum early on handed over its Twitter account to one of the security guards. Did you guys see this, Terry? So you it's must. Amazing. Oh so my gosh! I, I I forgot about it. I need to check that in and see how that's going because he was amazing. Like I yeah. I think he needs to just keep all of their social media forever. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That was awesome. Okay, another comment. Great idea from Stephanie. She says you can also stream Broadway hits right now. Ooh. Check it out with the free seven day trial. I love the free ideas too. Thanks, Stephanie. So there's a link there from that. Um, gosh, some some really great ideas. All right, guys. Well, this has been awesome. I am so thankful for you for joining me today. Um, letting me get a little, you know. Well, I mean, this is normal for me, right? You guys know that. <laughs> But usually not on our M Connections page. So, you know, we, we were talking about this beforehand. Uh, of course, our interviews have been very serious in nature because, you know, the situation we're dealing with is very serious. And we we recognize that and we we greatly appreciate those who are um, essential workers right now working in our hospitals, all of our medical professionals, all of our grocery store workers, um, our truck drivers. Um, and we know just how serious this is. Um, that said, we also know that there are a lot of people at home dealing with this either physically or mentally and emotionally. And so thank you guys so much for sharing your ideas, for inviting me to your parties. Please keep it coming. <laughs> Audrey, we're going to get you in on that bracket. So don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. So guys, thanks so much. If you have one maybe one parting thought or one idea, one something maybe that you even want someone else to come up with so that you can join in on the fun. Terry, I definitely want the karaoke party. Invite me to that. That's going to be awesome. But one kind of parting thought um, or idea before we go um, that you want to share with. I mean, go ahead, Terry. To, so to your point just a minute ago about, you know, this is a serious subject and, and we're not making light of it. One of the thoughts that I had last night is these ideas aren't just to provide us with entertainment or necessarily even to provide support to people who need it, which is great. But the more that we can make it um, OK for people to stay at home and find entertainment at home, that's that's not just helping us. That's helping this whole thing, you know, flatten the curve and resolve faster. So 
um, you know, this is, it's not about taking it, not taking it seriously. This is just about finding ways to make this more tenable for us so that we can do what we're supposed to be doing, staying at home and getting through this faster or with, you know, less impact. Mm -hmm. And to piggyback on that, I would say it, it, we are complex beings, right? We have emotional needs, we have mental needs, we have physical needs. So we might be staying at home, but that doesn't mean we're not suffering from lack of engagement. Humans are social creatures, right? We need each other. And I think we are seeing in this, this hard time that we're coming together in a way that we're supposed to, right? Like this is how we're supposed to connect. And I think if this is a horrible situation and I'm heartbroken at the lives lost and I'm thankful for the people who are still out there. And also I know that this connection is something we didn't have before and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I think it's okay to see it as both. So that would be my, my tip is it's okay to see it as both a travesty and also an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, 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 you know, I think for so many people too that um, are, you know, maybe struggling with, with struggling with how to remain connected. Um, I don't have any, a specific idea like doing a bracket, but but just, you know, I say, think of like the things that you would normally be doing right now or the way that the get togethers you'd normally, normally be having. And then ask yourself, okay, how can I still do that without leaving my house? You know, it's a lot of virtual things, a lot of you know, mm -hmm. people Zoom a lot, obviously, things like that. But there's also like some former coworkers of mine, um, these two women that have been getting lunch together every week for over 20 years now, and they didn't want the they didn't want to stop that because that's a tradition that they that they cherish and it's, it's something that's important to them. And so they, what they did was they started packing their own lunches and driving to a parking lot somewhere and parking you know one space parking space away from each other, and then staying in their own cars and rolling down their windows and just still having lunch together. So they're getting that interaction. And, and being able to keep up with one another without actually like, like, you know, being in the same physical space, but being near it. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things like that, that I think people can still do that. It's just like, you know, thinking a little bit differently about how you would normally operate. But, um, but I think finding those things, you know, it's given us the opportunity to figure out like what's really important to us for that emotional health for that, you know, um, to keep the, the, those contacts and those connections up, but then figuring out those ways that we can still do that, whether it's, through Zoom or a car lunch, or even just, I've known some people starting a Google Doc um, and just sharing with each other ideas on how to, you know, do activities while maintaining social distance. And just that 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 shared doc format has has helped them you know, kind of, you know, remain in touch with the people they care about. So, yeah, I I think all of your points are so so incredible, and you know, and. And talking with people, I've, I've talked with, I've had the the pleasure of talking with a lot of people in a, in a lot of different fields over the last four weeks. Um, you know, whether it's lawyers or accountants, um, those working with small businesses on on creating their loan applications, and and of course marketing and. Um, and there's one thing that really stands out to me about every single person I've talked to, and it's at the end of the day, we are all human. We might be an expert in one field. I mean, each of you are experts in your field and your jobs, but we, at the end of the day, we are people who, as Audrey has said, we have these mental and emotional needs in addition to the physical desire to be leaving our homes. But it's so important, as Terry said, that we all do our part and flatten the curve and um, and and also to um, to take care of ourselves while we're doing so. And so I encourage our audience, if you're watching, you know, reach out when you need to. There are always people there. I mean, that's the great thing about this happening in this time is that we are connected with this, all of these digital platforms and new, new platforms emerging, I feel like every, every day. And so there's always someone who's just a phone call or a Zoom meeting or a TV show bracket away. So thank you guys so much for sharing your your time today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your, your Saturdays. And, and to, thank you to everyone at home who's tuning in to watch us. If you have ideas you'd like to share, we would love to have you join in the comments even after this live broadcast ends. Um, share your ideas, a great way for all of us to stay connected. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.